Yo. Some light. That's what I'm saying. The like particular mm -hmm. angle of it's a little. Yeah. Do this. <clears throat> I really have to bathe in it. It's bright enough. If it were a few feet further away, it's not going to hurt me. Okay, so I'm going to stick them on something. And then there's a huge that we get pulled out of our memory serves. La 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 la. La 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 la. No, we can't play any real music because. Ah. Can we open this to get some light or do you keep it closed for the. Um, you can open it. Here we go. Share to my group. Go live. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Let's see, I hear a little bit of noise. Are the panelists? Hello. That's me talking back to me. Hello, hello, hello. There we go. I can get rid of me talking to me. <laughs> All right. We look like we are showing up in the Facebook group. How awesome is that? Um, I've got the second screen going here as well, so cool. Um, yeah, I've got some love, so that means somebody must see me. <laughs> How does it get any better than that? Um, we're about five minutes till the start of the show, and so we are, um, I'm still going to try to like play with a couple of other things here. Um, this is my first time broadcasting. I've got this broadcast to... Um, it, on the Zoom line, right, the Zoom webinar, and then we're also trying to broadcast to Facebook, and I'm going to click one more button here. Oh, I can only broadcast um, to one thing at a time, so we chose Facebook today, cool, but I guess I could have done YouTube as well. Here comes Ron. Dun, 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 dun. Hey, I, they, we can, we're seeing, so that's good. <laughs> hello, hello. Hi. So I can't scoot over anymore, so yeah, just move that over like that. Tilt that bad baby just a little bit. Tilt that over and scoot on in. And oh, yeah. We are, we got about four minutes here and until we get uh, officially started. Hello, um, John, and hello, Lou. And uh, my acupuncturist, or I haven't seen you in forever. <laughs> it's been a while. So glad to have you on. Um, and I know we got people listening and watching uh, via the Facebook live stream. So how does it get any better than that? All right. What else is possible here? So excited you guys could join us. Um, so such fun. That, um, if you'll let us know where you're calling in from, that would be cool. So if you type that in the chat there, I think there's the ability. We're doing this as a webinar, not as a regular Zoom. So if you can let us know in the chat where you're calling in from, that would be awesome. Are you going to dial in that way too? I was going to see if it, would, if it would let me just make sure we're so all squared away. Up, yep, I'm going to open up the chat here so I can see that. And we got a Q&A part. I got that part opened. Perfect. So technology looks like it's working today. We're ready. Yay! <laughs> right? That's half the battle sometimes is the technology part of things. Would you open me up onto the Facebook group? That's it right there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Ah, it's there a little left to right, little left to right action. Are we backwards? We <laughs> yeah. are. How cool is that? <laughs> We're also on delay. That's pretty yes, fun. Yes. So that's fun that 
so there, there's an alternate reality <laughs> where we're like <laughs> so we're slower. seeing ourselves live in the group and there's probably i don't know i would guess at least a 15 second delay in it it's pretty fun it's called web before web, before the webinar pre-game pre-game <laughs> Um, we are already recording, so that's good to know. I don't have to worry about that. Webinar I, format. I don't know how to worry about that. That. Hey, Brian. I think that's Brian from Colorado. Welcome. And Betsy. Betsy, where are you calling in from? Type in the chat where you're coming in from. John is coming calling from. Hot Lana. I don't think it's hot right now, honey. I think that's just what snow. it's called. It's called Hot Lana. They have snow. That's, <laughs> that's Brian. I make sales. Zimmerman. <laughs> he is hot. Hot, 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 making money, getting clients. We have Jane, who's in uh, the other side of Florida. Yes. And Betsy, where are you calling in from? I'm not quite sure I know you well enough for that. Betsy is near Atlanta. Okay, so you might know, might know John or need to know John. Um, cool. All right, well, we are so excited to have you here, and we're just a couple minutes before the official start of the webinar today. So make sure you're comfortable. We're going to go for about an hour, um, unless people have awesome questions. We'll stay sometimes on. I run amok. Yes, sometimes you run amok. Um, but from that, then uh, just make sure you're comfortable, and we will take questions. If you have them, you can do that in the chat. If you don't know where the chat is, there is some button on your computer, and it's in a different place on everybody's screen that says chat, and you can punch it, and then you just type your question in there. And there's also like a Q&A section which um, is a little different. It shows up differently, like for me. Um, but you're welcome to put your questions in there. And we can technically see what you put in the Facebook, um, the Facebook group, you know, timeline feed. So if you want to post your question there, um, we'll try to multitask and, and take care of those as well. So with that. We're going to have a little different format today. Um, in part, we're going to do it as a little bit of a, a back and forth with Mandy and I and some you know, question and answer. Um, there's some inspiration behind some of this and we definitely want to talk about that inspiration um, you know there's some uh, new possibilities that we're brewing and we're looking forward to sharing with you guys so anything that comes up um, I'd love to talk about it um, we're gonna try and articulate what we see for this new year what we're interested in what is getting us excited and what um, what we see is possible for all the people in our community yeah, yeah, very excited. 2018 is going to be an amazing year. So in 2017, I did more travel than I've ever done in my entire life. Yeah, is that because mm -hmm. your wife drove you around the world? There was a lot of that. Yeah, there was a lot of that. <laughs> we went to Copenhagen, mm -hmm. right? We went on two different ski trips in the last 365 days. I'm going to butcher in the year a little bit. Um, we went to Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. Went to Houston, went to New York City. Dallas. Dallas. Went to Dallas twice. Probably. Right? Got family there. Mm -hmm. And awesome clients. Hello, yes. Joyce. So Joyce is outside of Dallas, though. So. Um, all right. Wendy's <clears throat> calling in from, I think, Australia, if I, get, if I remember that I think, right. I think she's an Aussie. Yeah, yeah. Feel, feel free to hit us up and tell us where you're from. Kevin. I don't remember where Kevin calls. Chicago or one of those Midwestern forgettable states. <laughs> Uh, that's why we have retreats down here in South Florida, because everybody wants to come to South Florida. <laughs> um, all right. Well, we are here today to. We're gonna have some humor and things, right? Oh, we've got to. <laughs> Fifty-five. That is good. Yeah. That is good. <laughs> uh, is it Chicago? You're outside of Kevin, or is it? Again, I don't remember. Say again, and I will it's... not forget that mistake this time. So. Um. Anyway, we are here today. Um, yes, Chicago, Kevin's in Chicago. We are here today to talk to you about our, I kind of really hate the word mission, but you know, um, cause I have lots of points of view that people have given me over the years about, you know, having a mission or a manifesto or something. Right. Um, but the idea of like that scaredness that it would be, that would, but it would propel me forward enough to. To, to really be an invitation for people. Um, we came up with the idea of, you know, being able to help a million people make a million dollars. Um, kind of just in the flow of having conversations this weekend about, you know, what is it that 
the Expand Your Impact community needs for transforming this next year? And how can we really push the envelope when it comes to um, supporting people who love what they do, are really good at what they do, have a completely unique way of integrating everything that they've experienced in the world and all the different things that they've learned. And most of you are like me and Ron, where we just love to learn. We could get another certification if you named it, right? Or we could learn another thing. Um, but it's the integrating of that in really using that to change the world that we're so passionate about. And it really rubs my craw, though, when, um, <laughs> when I hear about people not making enough money to live, to continue to do what they're, they're doing, or just not enough to have the wonderful experiences that their bodies and their businesses might really want to have. And so Mandy is saying that it's a we, when really Mandy got a download about having a, um, a million conscious entrepreneurs. Yes, and you keep reminding me, it's conscious entrepreneurs, because right. we're not um, after just helping people make money. We've, we've done that. Ron's been in a business, you know, for several years where all they do is sort of broker big deals. And there's not a lot of consciousness sometimes in those deals. And I have spent a good amount of years like judging sure. <laughs> things because, you know, baby diapers in China, how did that make the world more conscious? Like, why can't we help the healers and things like that? And as I've overcome a lot of my my judgments with that. You don't have any judgment? I have a shit ton of judgments, like all day long, every day. More than I take breaths, I think, sometimes. Um, but what it comes back to is, like, there's got to be a way. And there's actually, I, I'm really passionate about the fact that there's there's an absolutely new way. Social media has never given us the opportunity to reach out to people all over the world in such an, an easy and dynamic way as it has before. And so the only thing that's stopping a lot of conscious entrepreneurs from getting out there is they stumble over what to say and how to say it. And sometimes really just the belief that they can have what they want. Right. So let me interject now. That's why this conscious part, that's why this conscious part is so very important, right? So in our understanding of consciousness, right, it is an allowing of everything and a judgment of nothing, right? So it is in your judgments, your thoughts and beliefs that, that hold you in place that create the expectations for what you feel like is possible for you. So I believe that it is through your consciousness, right? Not through your conniving, right? That you will access the money that is there for you and the lifestyle that you really want to live, right? And the million dollars is, is in million people are just such fun words because we attach such shit to the word million like it's not big a deal, right? A million people this, a million dollars of that. And so I am here to play with all of the meanings and the underlying underpinning beliefs that come up. So as you have a question about you know, what does this mean or what does that mean or how is that possible or call any kind of bullshit you like and I'd love to flush it out, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, so those of you who are present and able to put in, to type into the chat, both in the Facebook Live, thank you for being here, and in the regular Zoom chat, um, would I'd love to know when we say a million dollars, that we'd like to help you create a million dollars or support you in the possibility of believing that's that that's a possibility, right? Um, how true for you or what conclusions do you immediately go to to when we say that? Okay, so let me know what conclusions and judgments because we just need to be aware of them so we can change them. When I say that we want to help you make a million dollars, what immediately goes into your head? Okay. Um, so Kevin says he hasn't done it before. <laughs> Brian says that that's hard. I'll tell you about what that should be hard in a little bit. <laughs> um, can I really do it? Is it possible? Becky says, well, I need to know how much per month I can make that happen. And Celeste is like, it ain't happening at all. <laughs> it's not possible. It's $83,000 per month. <laughs> and uh, Anita is like, holy crap, that's a lot of money. 
So let me give you an example where we attach a bunch of shit to it, right? Because I, I made you like do a double take, right? So what's really funny about how this evolves for Manny and I as we go through this is we've actually written out, this is a, a seven day challenge, right? We've written out topics for seven days. And today's in particular, we had a whole storyboard of what was going on that we abandoned in the last two hours because we've gotten a different vibe of what it is we want to talk about. Because we really, really think we are more suited to talk about what you want and what you're interested in and shifting your world and telling you about our back history and why we deserve to be here in front. Mm -hmm. Right? There's some stuff that might tap in, but. Have you ever been on one of those webinars where all they do for the first 30 minutes is just tell you how many people that beat them as kids and locked them in rooms and made them eat dirt? You know, stuff I love like eating that. dirt. <laughs> right? <laughs> I have been so turned off by that and been trained by so many people that that's the way that I'm supposed to, you know, do stuff. I even felt bad that I didn't have enough that much shit happen in my life, right? So I went and created some drama so I could have something to talk about. And what I realize about that though is from the point of consciousness, right? The reason we're taught that is it's not wrong. It's really that was sort of the tools that uh, motivated people, right? And it was also when you tell a story, you are tapping into for yourself an energy and a vibration and emotions with that story. Because every time we tell a story, we have all those emotions come up about, you know, what, what our parents said to us as a kid. Like we can feel that, right? And then we emote that. And then other people pick up on that and match that vibration. And then what happens though is, so when there's a match for that, then there's an ability to sort of invite somebody into a new possibility of, of what you have to offer or something like that. But what I'm, I'm really curious about, and I haven't quite figured this out yet, and I can't wait to see who comes and plays with us to, to be the change about this, but there's some new way that we're being invited into doing marketing where just you showing up and being awesome and you being the invitation and the space of consciousness where you don't judge people as wrong, you don't judge what they're doing is wrong, but all you're doing is inviting them to a new possibility of what you've been able to create for yourself. And you know, you'll, you want to guide them in through creating that themselves, that that's going to create this entirely new set of marketing that is actually in alignment with what all of you guys have been waiting for, for so many years is we don't want to learn to do marketing where if we have to do these, you know, silly sales processes or these silly, you know, manipulation tactics. And we don't want to do things that feel slimy in sales. You're, you're asking for that by the fact that there's so many people that are interested in this topic. So we're here to sort of invite you into that, that possibility even more and continue to explore that as a conversation. Um, so as a range of people, mm -hmm. right, we have helped beginners, people that are just getting started. Right. And those, you know, fell into people that are natural sort of intuitives, people that are healers. They know that they can help somebody. And their primary idea is that they can help people and they want to make money with that. So they're going to create a business around it. It's a service business. And typically they start out like, a, you know, in a one on one type sessions. Okay, I'm going to charge this per hour to do my Reiki or my acupuncture or my um, even even something like SEO consulting or pay per click marketing. I started off doing. Um, social media. I got invited to talk about Twitter. And it come from a world where I'd been doing marketing and um, internet marketing for a while. But um, what I had to integrate was I was an intuitive and I was, um, I was an energy healer and I had capacities with healing people's businesses and healing bodies and businesses that like I didn't even know about. And I found myself working with a lot of people who had run away from corporate because they too had like felt like in corporate, we can't be who we are. We have to hide all this stuff. And so they ran, they burned themselves out and they run off to go play in the woo woo world. And then the woo woo world hasn't, didn't have like the 
how to make money doing this sort of sort of place. And that brings me to the second type of person that we've helped, which is the closeted woo woo. <laughs> yes, yes. Right. Do you know right. anything about being a closeted uh, woo woo? I literally had my uh, woo woo books in the <laughs> closet, and has somebody had to do an intervention with me and ask me why I wasn't going to let anybody know that I was reading all these these books. Hundreds. Probably thousands of books. Lots of books. That I'd read, right? right. Yeah. And then the third type of people that we help. Who would that be? Those who have businesses, they're a little more, it's judgment, more advanced, right? They've been able to create, um, we have a couple of examples of people have been able to create monetarily success in the world, but they find themselves unhappy with the lives they've created, right? So they've created these successful businesses, but they don't feel like fulfilled or they find themselves burnt out. They're or, working in their business. Or they're constantly working in their business and <clears throat> they don't have any freedom or they're definitely not having any fun. And they usually create a shit ton of drama in their personal lives to continue to like run away and work harder and you know not have get to have fun in their lives. So when we looked at all three of these types of entrepreneurs that we we help and looking at you know how do we help them to go out and create an, a million dollars very consciously we had to break it down the million dollars into you know very logically into those different levels so what I want to take a second to to do for you is no matter where you're at based I can't on wait those, to see where she's going with this <laughs> based on those three levels where do you think you are let us know so I would say if we're going to put some judgments on here, right? A beginner business is someone who hasn't quite hit the six figure mark. Okay. Um, an intermediate business is someone who has done a hundred and there's absolutely no judgment on your answers here. We ask this so that we can support you in making sure we're talking to the right people and so that we can, um, you know, facilitate you in making the shift, right? So an intermediate business is going to be somewhere probably around the, you know, 100 to usually 500, maybe 600, half a million. 250 if you're a solo. Right, right. Somewhere in there. And then the the expert business or the advanced business is going to be like, okay, I've done like half a million or I've done a million. And maybe you've done a million in, say, in like another business, but you're trying to like have a more integrated life over here. So if you've been a million dollar sales producer and you're running off to go, you know, do Reiki now, I would call yourself like intermediate because you're sort of a mix of you created this much money in the world but you haven't created it for the thing you're trying to go do so let's take a look at this here um let me zoom back up and i have two screens here so you see me looking over here it's because i'm looking at your answers um we've got a beginner which um brian i know you have had a sales career before of making more than that so let's put you at intermediate okay um, Celeste, you say you're a big beginner business. Kevin's intermediate. <laughs> Leah is a long-term beginner. Oh, we got to get you over that hump. John is an intermediate. Um, <laughs> um, sales have going, been going down lately. Um, Wendy, a lot of success in her clinical practice, and now she wants to do a whole new business. Um, Anita is a beginner. Elise is a beginner, and Wendy says she's intermediate. Okay. So based on that, I don't feel like we have a lot of uh, expert business owners or the like advanced ones here, but maybe have somebody listening and I haven't checked the Facebook live chat there. Um, so as an example of somebody that would have um, been in the, in the advanced that we've worked uh, in the past, um, somebody was going on a, um, like a speaking tour and we help sponsor them and shuttle them around. Somebody else wanted to create their own coursework and launch it with joint ventures and affiliate work. Right, somebody who had developed their own other business and was wanting to leverage that fame into something else. Um, we have um, uh, we work with CEOs um, to promote their sort of thought leadership as an individual, as opposed to the company that they work with. We've done lots of that, and so part of what we want to do is to share some of the stories of other people that we've worked with, so that you can figure out which piece of this works. Because as we started to try and sort of slot and categorize how our conversations were going, we start to realize that we don't have to pick just one type of person that we help because we've helped a lot of different people do a lot of different things. We've helped launch someone, uh, someone launch 
um, a meditation like DVD kind of program, right? Using online sales techniques. And they really had no business online prior to that. We've helped somebody launch a Amazon bestseller book. And with this though, the thing to me that's, that's so fun about consciousness is in my own journey, everywhere where I find myself being a superior judgmental bitch about something, um, it's usually where I have some ability or some capacity to sort of heal the situation. And that's usually where the person is, why they're sort of coming to me. So in the examples of these, these um, clients who are more at that advanced level, right? So they've created some success in the world in this particular way. And a lot of times, a lot of times, there's something about that where they're like, um, I'm tired of this. This is too much work. It's too hard. I want to go off and create something else over here. And this thing over here seems so easy and so, you know, sexy and so delightful that they, they want to go off and they want to go do that. And it's usually something that's like very heart centered. Like they want to, you know, go, go help people do this or go create this course out of their own stuff. Save the penguins. And what I realized with it was it's the same energy that the, the beginner entrepreneurs have of wanting to pour their heart and soul into something and create it in the world. And because the same shit comes up about it. How do I talk to people about this? How do I sell something to the world that's actually never been sold before, right? Because you keep having to go back and model you know, you're, you're like, I have this new idea for this combination of modalities or this combination of things that will support people. But I only know, you know, we've learned marketing from people who sold potato chips, right? Or people who sold cigarettes and, you know, people who sold things that, that don't match. But what, what we're wanting to help translate for you is that energy of, if you can start to understand a couple of fundamentals, no matter what level you're at. So I'll, I'm, I'm going to speak in specific so that I, I just moved it off of you. I didn't mean to do that. Um, <laughs> I want to speak in specifics. We had one client, very successful, pers very successful um, personal business, a uh, lawyer, multi law firms across the country, um, had his own TV show, had his own, um, you know, online presence but wanted to create a course about how to go out and, and get more media attention like he had and become this, you know, build your business with this, this stuff. And it was a great concept. And, but what stopped him ultimately from, and he had to realize to say, you know what, I guess I really don't want to do this is when it came to him selling himself and putting his name behind, you know, sales processes and something like that, he put the brakes on things and he was like, no, I don't want to seem salesy and I don't want to seem sleazy. And you know, I can't let people know that this is who I am. Right. And that's a lot of the same energy. Give me a yes in the chat. Right. If you are like, I don't want to be associated with that. Like sales is slimy and sales is sleazy. And it's, a, um, it's fun that you bring that part of the story up because that's the same objection somebody would be having at all levels of the business. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you're an intermediate or a beginner. No, we had another had it all the way through. We had another client that was a, a seven figure earner in a direct response business where she um, had a team. Like network marketing. Yeah. So she was selling products to clients. It's cosmetics and stuff. Right. She was very comfortable on stage, very fluid talking about it. She looked wonderful in the aspect of it. But when she pivoted and began to sell herself and sell the services and the, the consulting that she could do, suddenly her sort of abundant style sort of dissolved because the thing that she was selling in herself, she didn't have a firm foundation of personal value. So one of the the stories that my mentor told me that really helped me sort of shift the energy around this, right? Is if we're going out and getting paid to do something that we really love to do and that comes very easy to us, right? And so I'd love to know in the chat what you think comes easily to you, right? And it's often the thing that we don't All value. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we'll get back to that in just a second. Um, it's often something that, so for me, being able, if you sit down with me 
and you say, Mandy, you know, I'm trying to figure out how to sell this. How do I do this? I can create a sales funnel like nothing. Just like I can be like, this should be your free gift. This is where you're going to go to get people to, to sign up for the free gift. Um, this is what should be the first thing you sell. And this should be the next thing you sell. And this, this should be your $10,000, $100,000 program. Like I can do that without effort again and again. Right. And because, and we've got some other things, healing, inspiring people, um, in in intellectual property. What, what's very interesting is if we've not had that value for us as a kid, or, um, if we've been sort of made wrong for that as a kid and all it takes is one person like saying, you know, shush, you shouldn't do that. And we have no idea like why they were telling us, telling us that at some point. Right. But what it does is it sort of anchors in us that it's not okay. And the, the, the funny example that my mentor told me is she's like, what most of you are really afraid of is being considered a thief for taking money for something that comes so easily to you. And when she said that, I, it like really hit me from, you know, lifetimes ago of that that definitely was an energy that I could resonate with was I don't want to appear. And she used the analogy of like, you know, a whore, right? Whores get enjoy Love sex this. and get paid to have sex. Sometimes they're really mistreated. That's a whole separate conversation, right? But somebody who's in that is, does, does it well, enjoys it and gets really well paid for it. And so there's an underlying belief that it should be hard, right? Right. It should be hard. You're trying to set me up for the penis joke. Aren't it, should, you? <laughs> it should be hard. Right. Even Elise is in the comments. She says, I was going to say, I love to share ideas and talking, but I was ridiculed about that as a kid. You were told you were too loud. You need to shut up, take your turn. Adults are talking, kids are quiet. You get, you buy that lie as a kid and you carry it forward and you collapse all of that. Right. So if we can remove um, the constraints or the judgment you have about you and your thing from money and just have the idea of money is energy, right? And money is like air. You don't think about how much air you're taking in. Like you don't need to stop breathing for the next hour. So I have air to breathe, right? That doesn't have, that doesn't work that way. But we have a lot of judgments and a lot of points of view about our self-worth, about our self-value, about money. And I'm going to add in a couple of other ones here that, that trigger triggered me a lot that while I don't have a perfect way to execute them now, I just want to throw them out on the table. So one of the other topics for me that, just really annoys me is the whole concept of passion and purpose, right? And coming up, I grew up as you can tell <laughs> I just want to spit on the word, right? Um, partially because I feel like I suck at it and like I haven't been able to do it right. Do I am I just like annoyed at the words? Um, but as a kid, I grew up in a very strict Southern Baptist home. I was supposed to go off and be a preacher um, and go, you know, lead other people to the light and to Jesus. And so funny that I'm actually really kind of doing that now, but in my own way, right. Um, self-actualized, you know, creation of the universe. Um, but with that, I had to read the purpose driven life. I went through the book and I was like, I don't understand how we can only really have like one purpose in life. And the one purpose in life is to like heal people from cancer at, or, you know, whatever that is. And that purpose is hidden. And I have to go turn over a million it, rocks to find it. It just didn't make sense to me, right? The same thing that the, you know, in Christianity, they say that if you don't believe in God, you're going to go to hell. And I'm like, but what about all the Jewish people? And, and what about all the Indians? And like, this doesn't make sense to me, right? So not making any of that wrong, right? Um, the, looking at the word passion, it actually, if you look it up in a dictionary prior to like 1945, it actually means to crucify or crucifixion in the, in the literal sense, right? So you have all of these people who are going around energetically, like being crucified by what they're passionate about. And for me, I, I felt very not monogamous. What is, what is somebody who's not monogamous? Polygamist or something? I felt like 
I'm, I'm a very polygamist about my, my passions. Like, I might be passionate about Pilates for a couple of years, and then I'm like, fuck that, I hurt, let me go to yoga. Or I might be very passionate about keto or vegan. So you see or, that she's communicating an underlying belief that the passion meant that she could only do one. And, and she feels like, in violation to that. I'm a passionate person. I like to right. do lots of things. And, and the other thing that you're highlighting is in being passionate for it, you must sacrifice yourself on the altar of whatever it is that you are passionate about. But you cannot have you that sounds like and have your wholeness and have this thing that you love doing so much. That you must die in order to achieve it. So, right? You can see that she's visibly you know, involved in it. Right? <laughs> so this is where it's such a fun exchange for she and I because rarely are we both in the same woods at the same time. So we have great conversations because one of us has got the tree and one of us has got the forest, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the benefit that we provide to our community is that we've got both a masculine and a feminine you know, perspective, a male and a female perspective. And we come at things um, from a lot of different ways, right? So one of the reasons why we wanted to share in this format was to talk about for us to make money as entrepreneurs, right? There's foundational, fundamental items that include accounting, right? Basic marketing and how do I get my customers, right? Who are my customers? What's my offer? What's my message? How do I convert them? How do I deliver it? How do I do all this? Do, 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 do. How do I get all by more myself? people interested in me than I need right now? Because mm -hmm. if you guys have seen any of my client magnet alchemy stuff, we talk about, or any of the, the LinkedIn stuff, right? Only 3% of the population actually wants <coughs> whatever it is you got right now. I gotta get all choked up about it. <laughs> but there is 67% of the population right now who's like, mm, not interested. <coughs> and so the whole like creation of the law, the, the, the attraction marketing is, was designed to teach you how to talk to people in the various stages of when they're ready to work with you and in the various stages of how people buy. Some people are readers. Some people, some of you have been on my email list for a decade now, right? And you just now have, or like, oh, I have a problem that, that Mandy can help me with, or she just seems like she could help and it would be fun to play some more, right? Some of you, opt in for the first thing and then two minutes later you're calling me up going never mind i don't want to do any of this just tell me how much i need to pay to get it all done all right and so in creating marketing that has more people come to you that has you be visible enough right so that you can make a million dollars right so you can receive that with total ease there's there's like for me there's just little layers and like we've got to be good at this skill and that means we have to remove this amount of judgments and then we can dream a little bit bigger and then we can remove some more judgments about ourselves and others and everything else. And we can move a little bit higher and we can learn some more and we can remove some judgments. And so the people who are at this at levels of us that are higher have removed some of the judgments and the limitations that hold them back from that particular piece of reality. And the fun part of it is, is there's probably parts of your reality, maybe with your body, maybe with your relationships, maybe with animals or where, whatever your capacities are, you have ease with that subject. And that's where you're looking to literally the one word that I'm, you know, committed to right now is changing and shaping how people view the word play and the word or fun, right? And then freedom. Because can, if we continue to jam ourselves up about what's fun, then we won't do the activities that are going to be necessary to grow our business. And if we keep waiting for freedom until we achieve whatever goal it is, right? And then if we just choose freedom now, then we have at our disposal all of the resources of the universe that can create things magically. So you're getting an idea in this conversation that this is a little different conversation than what you would have 
in other communities. And that's in part why we wanted to do it because we would like to distinguish ourselves and, and be an invitation to more. And part of the reason why I'm instigating that now is that Mandy was giving you her hand over hand stepwise ladder, right? There's never been a better community that's a, a mix of how to teach like modern direct response marketing and then provided you with conscious support in a non-judgmental environment where you are encouraged to just be yourself and that being you was always the answer for you. Right? If it to go back into some of my journey, um, I, I can look back at it now and know that every single time I took on a guru's point of view, uh, it, it was this relationship that happens with children, right? Children think you are amazing and awesome. And then they go through a couple of periods of years where they're like, uh, you're not so awesome. You don't have everything figured out. There's a better way. And, you know, now being an adult, I see that, that I went through that as a child, right? And I am consciously trying to change that conversation for um, my children partly because I don't want my mom to be right that I'll do to my kids will do to me what I did to her. <laughs> right. There's gotta be another possibility. Um, but also like, why do the kids need to suffer in that way? Like that we did. And there's a rightness to the journey that we've been through. Right. And so it, it created more for us. Um, and so in inviting all of you to that, that contrast of you aligning and agreeing, making the shift to mm, seeing a different possibility and then needing to leave your tribe or your group of people to say, Hey, there's something different. And to make that journey out of, you know, the nest of security or the, the, the community that you've been a part of, you need to jump into another community where you feel safe, where you feel secure, where you can bump heads with some other people so that you can continue to sort out your verbiage and your languaging and um, like your point of view in the world and how it, how it's important and how it, it impacts other people. So part of the, this community is going to be to foster you in having those conversations, right? Not be, being okay with having somebody have a different point of view with you so that you can start to look at what, what went on and say, you know what? I want something different. And the real, the, the real um, difference between somebody who uses that contrast to feel victim in the world um, or somebody who uses it to be successful is just the choice of, I believe in the possibility that I desire more than I believe in the reality that I'm like currently seeing right now. And, um, what are you laughing about? You're just cruising through so much material. I'm getting the sense there's dogs watching television. <laughs> are they more texting at this point? All right. So do no, we no, need no. to take it down? Finish, finish, just finish what you were I saying. I think I lost my train of thought okay. of that. You guys got to let us know if you're with us here. Do you okay. get what we're so the, saying? The or? last the last point that Mandy made, which is kind of a crescendo of a, you know, a big symbol, that you need to believe in the possibility more than you believe in this reality. Do you need to believe in the possibility more than you need than you believe in this reality? And if you say hashtag I get it versus hashtag WTF, <laughs> I would appreciate it because you see she gets on a roll and she just starts flowing and she's just hitting you with it. All of it's I think my beautiful. My mom told me I was too much as a child. All of that, all of that is beautiful. <laughs> Shut up, Ron. All of that is beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that was beautiful. We're in the, we're in the right I know, I know. It's good. We're in the it's right good. Place. So, in this community, you're not wrong, okay? And um, <laughs> if, because <laughs> that also created more too, right? Yeah, she needs to breathe. Um, she gets a chance. With that, though, there's something that you're all of all of what you're sort of fighting with, right? And it might be sales letters. It might be sales conversations. It might be you know, technology, lots of you hate, like love to make shit blow up on the computer so that you don't have to keep moving forward. So here, let's, let's test this actually. For all of you don't that are, that, like, oh yeah. Ask. So for all of you that I get it, all of you that I get it, I'd like you to give me a post 
What is it that you believe that is possible that you do not see in this reality that you're willing to reach for? Mm -hmm. Since you all get it and you understand what we're talking about, right? So that word million has come up a couple of times, mm -hmm. right? And there's so much shit attached to it. I'd love to like destroy and uncreate and have you reconsider all that. We'll go through some techniques for that, right? right? But what is it that you believe is possible right now that you're willing to believe in more than what you have in this current reality, right? Yep. So it might be leaders who, and, and it, what, please state it in the positive. Even if you stay in the negative, I'm going to coach you into helping it be positive, right? So it might be you want to have leaders empower all their employees. It might be you want to have, you know, husbands and wives have really great communication, right? Um, so the idea of getting you to a goal of a million starts with not how many widgets can you sell to somebody because I, I, I can show you, all of you right now, if you needed money, you have a 15-minute call with Ron or I, and we can show you where the money is. You, the, the challenge will be that you don't want to go do what it's, what's required to go sell that, right? Because you really have something in your heart that wants to be created, and you're really scared about that being out into the world. Keep going, guys. So we've got to get you out to more committed to like failing at this future endeavor, right? Trying your all, giving it your all, making a dent in that equation. Because if Ron and I make a dent in helping a million people make a million, right? If we just help a couple people make a million, the world's better off at conscious millionaires, right? The world is 10 times better off. Now, you've got some of that. I want to go into like... Keep I, going, guys. I think... If I, I can make a shift with the million, part of all of this is you guys think a certain way and all I, uh, what I really get to do is help you think another way, right? And then it all shifts, right? So I am guessing most of you on the call are older than 20 years old and you've all probably been in the workforce between 10 and more than 10 years, yes, right? So with that, um, can you t tell me in the chat, what was your first year salary? Do you remember right out of college when you got your first big grown up job? What, what salary did you get? Do you remember what your salary was? Mine would have been like $38,000, something like that. And that's when you had your graduate degree? Yes. Okay. That was the first time I was in a non like commission sales okay. you know, job. So um 30 38 for you right mm -hmm. okay and if you pr pretty much made about that you know for that next 10 years did you you increased your income i was an i was an entrepreneur pretty quick okay to but be, let's to just say a... that <laughs> let's just say that you know somebody's make, let me make it easy Forty thousand, right? right times 10 years mm -hmm. right that's four hundred thousand okay? dollars four hundred thousand dollars that's pretty close to half a million right so if you're in the workforce, if you're making 40000 and you never get a raise, right, and you do that for 20 years, we're at 800000 Many years ago. Right? <laughs> so I want you to absorb the concept right now, and some of you are going to be assholes and try to fight me on this. I love being assholes. Um, but most everybody on the call has already made a million dollars. dun 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 Bam. Okay. Now we're going to clear, uncreate and destroy all the now shit that comes up because you say, well, but I, I'm an asshole and I lost it and I didn't save any of it. And well, you know, it didn't, no, no. I want it all at once. Right. I want it all at once. Right. I'm a millionaire doesn't count unless I'm like have a million in the bank. I didn't say millionaire. I said, I'm going to help a million people create consciously a million dollars. So right. for some of you, you'll take the slow train to this and we'll, you know, be at it for 10 years together. It's fine, you know? Some of you are gonna be like, nope, I can do this in a year and you're gonna do it in a year. 
and it doesn't fucking matter. And what we're trying to highlight isn't how you keep score of the fucking money that you make. Okay, so be clear about this. What we're trying to do is to get you to underscore the massive amount of assumptions that you wrapped around the words that we gave you. And we're going to try and deconstruct them because the other way that we have learned from another one of the like millionaire uh, success people that we've modeled is something called chunking. Mm -hmm. Right? So chunking is an idea that I take, I take a concept that seems too large for me to accomplish and I break it down into smaller steps until I get it to a small enough step that I know that I can do that step. And if I know that I can do that step and I just repeat that step, that I will end up at the larger concept that I want. So in the case of the million dollars, the reason I know that it's $83,000 a month is because that was one of the original ways that we did the chunking goal. $83,000 a month, right, becomes 20,000 per week. Right. Right? It's like 3000 a day or something like yeah, it's, that. It's like 2500 a little more. And so if you make $1,300, who here has made $1,300 in their life? At one time or another, if you made $1,300, please get a yes, Ron. I've made $1,300. Stop trying, making me type silly stuff. $1,300, right? So if you $500 make, an hour. If you make $1,300 before lunch and $1,300 after lunch, that is on pace to make a million dollars in a year. Now, so the question, so, so we all can see here that it's possible, right? Most of you go into the... Or I can take off after lunch. <laughs> so look, most of you go into the how it can't work for you. And what I would ask you to shift into is the question of, well, what would it take? And then... Uh, that's where the that's where the stepping goes, right? So what would it take? Well, I would need to up. I would need to know where to go find people who would pay that much. Okay, write that down. That's a skill set you got to go learn. We happen to have a magic bullet that can help you with that. Um, then you need to learn. Okay, what do I need to say to those people to get them to invest in that way? Right? Okay, that's another skill I need to go learn. We have programs who can help you with that. Then there's another level of, okay, so I've got people who are interested in that. How do I invite them into this possibility with me, right? Again, that's another skill set that you can learn. And so a baseline that's three sets of skills, that's it. You need to have accountability in removing the iceberg of beliefs and limitations you have around those topics. Funny word, iceberg. And honestly though, the only thing that changes is your choice. So some of you are saying, I want the fast train, right? I want the fast train to this. Choice is the fast train, right? Choosing Ooh. what you desire instead of choosing. I'm not sure I could just choose it. I don't know if that's how that works. How many of you guys want to lose weight? Okay, if you would just put down the Cheetos or whatever your food of drug choice is, right? Or, and hop on an exercise equipment, a piece of exercise equipment, a, a zillion other judgments aside, how many of you know that that would shift the dime just a little bit? Right, and how many of you continue to not choose that reality? Right, and there's no judgment on that. I'm just saying, you do that in your personal life and you do that in your business. And here's the reason why sort of I believe that, 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 that that's the case. It's another place where you, I'm gonna say for me, I was so scared at my magical capacities as a kid and even my magical capacities as, as an adult, right? When I, and, and this is where the law of attraction, you know, if you've studied that, you'd say, you know, if you want it and you feel it and you visualize it, you know, you'll create it. And then you have all of these things where you're like, well, I've been thinking about that and wanting that and it hasn't happened, right? There's some place of business where you see another possibility that exists and you have within you those capacities. But if you actually allow yourself, again, we went back to this conversation before, of having it be so easy that you could get paid a lot of money for it, but you would 
feel bad for having it be that easy. Like, you've got to get out of just that, you know what, I'm done feeling bad about this. Like, I am done with feeling bad about this. That's the main choice that I've seen for myself over time. Like, I am done with this. I want what I want because I want it because it's fun. And, and I'm going to learn okay. every time I get what I want and I learn that I don't really want it. I learn something else and I learn more about what I desire, not based off what other people desire for me. So we've shown you, <laughs> Anita's not been to the gym in five years. <laughs> I wonder what your sweet body would like. <laughs> Today might not be the day, but maybe a couple stretches to tie us all back together about why we're here, right? This is not going to be a community where you don't get to take action or you don't get to choose. Okay. Um, Jessica is so amazing. She's in our community. She made a video just the other day. You guys can see her. She's very active in the community. She sort of lovingly teases me about how much I can get accomplished and how much I get done. And, um, I, I am that as an inspiration for you and not as a, you have to be like me to, to do this, right? Because each of you have your own processes. But the energy of who I be in my implementation is somebody who isn't afraid to try a bunch of different things, okay? It's I'm going to find out, you know, what my body wants to eat. I'm going to find out which exercises it enjoys the most. I'm going to find out what marketing messages get the most of you to sign up for a webinar or to get um, judgment, but like the best of you to sign up for a webinar, right? The ones who I really want to go play with. Not the sucky ones. Yeah, yeah. I, I've had those webinars. <laughs> All the complainers and the blamers and the shamers and the guilters, right? Um, but, and you've had that too. So everywhere you're creating a reality, that proves to you, you can't do this. You're not good enough because your mommy or your ex-husband or your shitty husband told you that or somebody else in your life, you have to choose differently. So this community is about that accountability and that stand for you. And it's not about being a victim to anyone or anything, including your judgments of yourself and others. You can be a victim if you want to. You just can't be in our group anymore. No, you can. I'm just going to make fun of you. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I would just kick you out. <laughs> That's the judgmental bitch in me sometimes. Right. So inside of this, we are combining our many years of knowledge and our many different disciplines that we've digested. So I don't know if you know this, uh, Mandy is a certified direct marketer, right? Years and years of years of marketing mean, you know, like great experience, but literally she's gone through and got a little badge that she can wear saying that she knows how all these techniques work, yes. right? Social community manager, social like lead generation, funnel builder, opt-in right. optimization. <clears throat> and I say this because Mandy's gotten 97 different certifications to the point where she Please. knows that she was just chasing certifications because she likes to just learn new stuff, right? She's created 40 different magic bullet programs for zero, right? There's more than that. 40. Let's just keep that number for right now, right? It starts out as we have a Facebook magic bullet. We have a Twitter magic bullet. We have a Pinterest magic bullet, right? Then there's bullets about writing books and bullets about doing brands and bullets about making bullets, right? You get the idea. There's a lot of this, right? So inside of each of these magic bullets, there are videos over the shoulder, right? Of pressing buttons of how to make something work, right? One of our larger programs is about how to make, um, how to make leads, uh, clients, appointments, by utilizing the, the social media platform, LinkedIn. You guys saw one of these um, earlier this week on in the Facebook group because I showed you how to create an opt-in page because Elise needed one made, right? This is a skill of mine where I can walk through steps of how to get something done, right? So we've got those tools for you. <clears throat> so in the beginning, when you're a beginner and you're just getting started, you're not sure what to do, there's sort of two aspects that I would want you to consider. One is, 
how the fuck do I get started? What the hell should I do? And I don't know what's going on. And even as you hear me like making fun of that as, a, as an idea, there is literally like, I don't know what to do. But in shifting the energy, if you just go to, what do I want to play with today? So you see, see how quickly she pivoted you. Right? right? There's 40 magic bullets I could go play with. Which one, if I scroll through, looks fun to play with today? So when you're a beginner, it's okay you to go just... Go start to play with it. It's okay to just bootstrap. Right? So some of the programs that we have, Mandy has one that she made called Three Clients in Three Weeks. And that's what I, we're actually going to talk about tomorrow. So tomorrow when we get into, we're going to divide up. Can we talk about the next days? You can... Sure. No, no, it's good. That's so, I'm seeding it. <laughs> it works so well together. <laughs> um, okay. So day two, which is tomorrow, which is I think a Wednesday, we're going to talk about all, all about the newbies. Okay. So if you're under 100 or are looking to create another income stream that's at that 100,000 mark. We're gonna walk you through a business plan for what a couple different $100,000 businesses look like, right? We're gonna walk you through the beliefs and the techniques that need, the skill sets that need to be um, acknowledged and either outcreated or mastered in order to get to that level. And then on day three, which is Thursday, we're going to support the intermediate entrepreneur with what is the skill sets, what is the strategies, what is the tactics, what is the mindsets of that intermediate entrepreneur. And I would highly recommend that if you're a beginner, you go to all three segments because you're going to learn a lot about... Because you want to be intermediate. <laughs> <laughs> because you want to be advanced and you want the fast track. So just go ahead and tell me who I need to be. Right. And this for me was when I integrated... Um, my human being, my human beingness, right? And my human doingness, right? So people who get a lot of certifications and learn a lot are very good human doings. We get shit done. We, we, we learn a lot. We know a lot. We process a lot, right? But we forget about the first language that we learn is energy. And so those of you who've gone off and studied energy have to in, implement that back into this reality of Energy translates now into Facebook status updates, um, email marketing, Facebook is landing an energy. pages. It's all energy. It, every person who's on your email list comes with another energy that you can choose to feel overwhelmed about because you don't know what to do with them, or you can choose to see the abundance. Um, with Jessica, she we met her and she had like no Facebook or uh, LinkedIn friends. I think one, her mom or you know her husband or something. And a year later, she's got 4,000 LinkedIn connections. And she could choose to be overwhelmed about that, and maybe someday she does, or she can choose to say, okay, cool, I got 4,000 people that are possibilities of getting me clients, being a client, introducing me to a client, letting me travel around the world somewhere fun to go work with clients. Hmm, I wonder what cool person I could meet and network with today. Right? So those are the shifts in your beingness that have to happen at these three levels. So to get back to our days, you're going to want to go through all the days <laughs> because the benefit of being a part of the days is it's going to help you. So if right now you couldn't fathom charging $1,000 an hour, but you know that in order to hit your income goal, you need to honor yourself about at that, at that rate, you can put that on like a goal sheet. And I don't really believe in goals either. Um, I'll, we'll talk about that later. But if you want that to be a reality for you, then you've got to stay in question about that reality and go, okay, so what would it take to generate $1,000 an hour so that I can have what I want? Because the this is the way you guys also like screw yourselves up. You guys don't want things in this reality like you think you want them. You want the energy that comes with whatever it is because I don't really want, in, you guys don't want necessarily Ron. We had some comments in the chat. You guys love us together, right? It's not him that you really want, right? Or it's not me that you really want. It's the energy that you can recognize about this connection, right? Because there's things that I do that don't make me a very good partner. And there's things that he does that, you know, <laughs> we won't go there, right? Um, 
But what so you can't focus on that either. You can't focus on the dirty socks on the floor. You got to focus on the amazing, amazing part of whatever else happens next. All right. So there's another story of amazing coming up that she's just seen. So let me take you back to where I was going before yeah. she hijacked the conversation. <laughs> Okay, so there's 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 magic bullets where there's a how-to program that it's based on strategies and tactics, right? Strategies and tactics of what to do of how to make money and how to process your day. Tomorrow we will have, among other things, the world's simplest business plan. We'll walk through it and lay it out. But the other part of it is the reason I was going into like the sound of overwhelm, right? Is that where we are really 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 good is working with you in some amount of like oh I'm in overwhelm we can help you reframe even what it means to be in overwhelm like cool. what about being in overwhelm is too much I know that seems sort of an ironic question but when you begin to see like one of the examples that we've used in other forums is when you're feeling overwhelmed it's just the subtlest conclusion, right? But it's the difference between you getting a download where you're able to see the whole thing done at one time, which is totally amazing, and then you're cutting it off in an instant because it's not here right fucking now, right? And you feel bad and you make yourself wrong because it's not here right now, which is lunacy, right? In my view, it's total lunacy. Like, just enjoy the fact that you can see it. The analogy is, seeing the entire sub sub sandwich and feeling bad that you're not able to jam the whole thing in your mouth at one time, that you're not okay and satisfied just taking one bite and another bite, knowing if I just take a bite and just take a bite, I'll not only be satisfied with what it is I'm trying to consume, but I can actually eat the entire sub sandwich. Mm -hmm. I can have it all, mm -hmm. right? So the overwhelm is just the subtlest little mind fuck of a conclusion and the thought and when you start to see that everything has a corollary, that you can get yourself out of overwhelm and you can say, oh, I'm going into overwhelm right now. And you can actually stop and step back and I don't have to choose that. Oh, but I didn't recognize I was choosing that. I thought it was happening to me. Mm -hmm. Right? So these are the conversations we can get into that help you as you acclimate to go back to Mandy's, Mandy's step, 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 step. For those who have been, right. who, those who've been on the, the chat saying um, that you've been in that space for too many years, mm -hmm. right? Um, that is, it's not a wrongness. Hello, this is Matthew. Matthew, say hello. Hi. Hi. Um, that's not a wrongness of you. That, what if the world just wasn't ready for you yet? <laughs> you know, like if you would have introduced this amazing whatever, right, you would have blown the circuits out of people. Like, or you would have been in a past life stoned or killed or something like that for whatever you're doing. So in this community, it's really about helping you to modulate that energy you already are, right, into what can this world hear right now? What can this world receive right now? And based on where the money is flowing economically, how do we tap into getting you set up so that you can make that impact that you're really looking to make, right? So, in, um, so we talked about tomorrow is about supporting the newbies. The next day is about supporting those people in the, in the immediate area. <laughs> Beginners, newbies, it's all judgment. I know. Um, the next one is a day four about advanced. Day five is um, really honing in on the difference between you being a human being, right, who perceives energy, who's super aware of what's going on and what the world needs to change, right? And it's the difference between you seeing a fat person and you saying, hey, you're fat, and you being an invitation to, hey, you know, would you like to not suffer from these things that fatness, you know, right. creates? Let, let, me, let me translate that for you from wherever that was. The idea of bringing up the fat person isn't that being fat is right or wrong. It was a joke that Mandy came up with with a fitness client like years ago where she was trying to implore that the, the client's messaging and their attitude was wrong because you can't just walk up and tell them, you need my services. You need me. Can't you look at you? Can't you tell you need me? Like that's not an approach. That's not an approach. 
right? It feel so since then, party. it's been like an inside joke. If I look at you and feel like you're fucked up, and I know I can help you because I can tell you're fucked up, I can't just walk up and tell you you're wrong or you need me, right? I need to be an invitation to where if somebody sees that they that you have something that they might like, that they can you can be an invitation for them to ask. But if somebody doesn't want to change, if they're not interested in a That's change, the there's, in no, there's, there's no action. Right. We are, want to teach you how to ask enough questions out in the world to be able to perceive if somebody is ready for you or not. Right? So that's part of why you're playing with us too, right? You got to see where you're at because we're not going to be a fit to play together for the next year, right? We're not going to be a fit if there's not some pieces that you're like not willing to sort of face and deal with. So that brings us to day six. And that is like the ultimate goal of the expand your impact community and the insiders and all of that. And then on day seven, we're going to talk about uh, we're going to celebrate some of the clients and people who've had successes. And some of you are going to have successes over the next seven days. Because honestly, as soon as you start to choose to not be pathetic and to mediocre, to not be mediocre and to actually ask for what you desire in your life, um, the magic shows up. I have two stories I'll end with. And I know we're over time. So if you need to hop, that's great. But there's two pieces. I'm going to stay. There's two pieces in my life where I was telling Ron and, you know, get teary about talking about it. But um, I went through undergrad school in three years and got, um, got straight A's and actually had to drive 90 miles each way because my parents wouldn't let me live on campus. Um, not uphill. uphill. Snow, <laughs> but, um, but I'm driving 90 miles each way. I'm taking 22 hours. I get done in three years. And then um, I go and I get a master's degree in one year. And at the end of that four years, emotionally, you know, I'm, I've, I've now, in order to live on campus in graduate school, I had to like tell my parents to fuck off. Like, I absolutely have to leave. I will pay for it. I will figure it out. Like, I'm a grown up. I, I got to leave. So I did that, like, cleaving, you know, at that point. And so emotionally, I'm learning how to be separate, right? And I am physically in a lot of pain, right? Because I'm taking on all those emotions and I don't yet know the body, mind body connections. And then I'm also just read and studied for years, right? And so I remember, you know, at that point, like praying to God, can I just go teach Pilates in the mountains somewhere? And it was such a simple prayer and I had no conclusion about like actually how that would look that I kid you not, 24 hours later, um, I had someone call the Pilates studio that I was working at, and um, they said, there is a mountain, a little one, in Oklahoma, and we need somebody to leave next week, be here by Monday, it was like Wednesday, right? We need somebody to be here by Monday. We want you to teach Pilates for the next 90 days. We'll pay you, I think it was $1,200 a week to come do this. We'll pay for all of your lodging in this resort hotel and all of your food. And you've got some activities you have to attend at night, like an orchestra and the ballet and things like that. But if you can handle that, Sounds terrible. if you can handle that, you know, can you be here by Monday? And like, I knew it was the answer to the prayer that I had prayed. And it was a more amazing answer to the prayer than I had ever anticipated like I had said I just want to go do Pilates in the mountains teach Pilates in the mountains right and I was happy with like 40 bucks an hour for a couple hours right but so did I not only get really well taken care of I got food I got lodging I got great pay right and I got to hang out with a bunch of artists like how does it get any better than that right and so when you choose sort of from that real desire of what you want, not what everyone tells you. Because after leaving college, what I should have wanted was, I just want somebody to give me a job. And that wasn't what I, me and my body wanted. My body wanted some, you know, fucking time off, right? And I created that in, in that way. And the second way this happened was um, after I was diagnosed with macular degeneration, so I'm like partially blind in one eye and I get poked in the eye with needles. Um, hear, that, uh, hear that guys, the treatment for that, 
Okay, the treatment for that is them taking a needle and making sure your eyes open and they're gonna Don't blink. <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna jab you with a needle in your eyeball. So I am looking at like what do I not want to see about my life? Macular degeneration in traditional terms is something that happens when you're old. Because your eye starts to just not be able to do what it used to do. So in getting this treatment, the doctors told me that I couldn't get pregnant for 12 months and I had two shots, right? So I'm facing 24 months of not being able to get pregnant <clears throat> in the prime time where I'm, you know, regularly crying in Target in the baby aisle because I'm just hormonal about stuff. And my husband, who's not wrong, um, at the time, and I get to have what at that time were very painful conversations about who we were and what we wanted in life, only to learn that he didn't want to be married to an entrepreneur. He didn't want me to parent his children. <laughs> and he really thought we should have gotten divorced about five years ago. So if I was not wanting what he wanted and I couldn't just suck it up and do it, that I probably should just move along. And so as soon as I said, you know what, I think I could do that. Even though my family traditions were, you know, Mary forever. Um, yes, now I'm a sinner because I'm divorced and now That's not why you're a sinner. my ovaries are drying up and I'll never find a man who wants to have babies with me. Like all of this good judgments my, my friends and family put on me. I said, no, what I want is I want a loving family. What I want is to be a thriving entrepreneur. And what I want is to feel healthy and nourished and whole, right? And literally, again, within 24 hours of me making that decision, I found a friend who had a 5,000 square foot beach house that I could live in rent free for the summer, right? On the ocean, <laughs> right? And so my magic's not your magic. And I have great magic with, you know, creating things in my business and in my, my living. You have that magic too, right? I created him, running into him right after that, right? And him having children and all of that coming with total ease. Right? You guys have that magic too. So a couple of things between now and tomorrow to, to focus on is getting more comfortable with wanting a million, okay? And getting comfortable with, with doing what's required in this reality, right? Shifting your vibration, shifting the actions you've got to take, getting yourself in vibrational alignment with taking the actions to get to that place. Under, it might mean you have to understand what markets would pay for whatever it is you're wanting to do. It might mean you need to get better at the copywriting and the having conversations. It might mean, mean you need to get better at time management, right? All of those things we're gonna sort of illuminate for you over the next seven days. If you already know that you need some help with this, um, happy to hop on the phone between now and, and tomorrow um, to talk with you about this. Um, let's give you some of those links here in the chat. So that's expand your impact. Oops, I can't spell and type and talk. Expand your impact.com forward slash Ron. If you want to give, talk with Ron. And if you prefer. Mandy's giving you links to a calendar where you can book a free uh, and If you session. know that you already need some more help and you're ready to take that fast train, schedule a call with us. Um, otherwise the plan to be on with us live for the next seven days, we have various different times. You've got to get signed up each day for each webinar because there's separate recording links and, and the system reminds you and stuff like that. So, um, tomorrow is expand day two, your impact.com forward slash day two. Um, if you want to go watch this again and the other piece of homework is so get comfortable with. I'm a millionaire. I can bend time and space, <laughs> right? What would it take to have that actualized with total ease? Ron is awesome. And anything that doesn't allow that, you're destroying it and creating, right? And <clears throat> acknowledging what you need to do to sort of make that a reality, right? She's saying the links are not showing up in the chat for some reason. Mm, all panelists. Okay, so. All panelists and attendees, thank you, Anita. Boom. Love thank it. You. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Great job. So, there guys, the links. if you there have you any go. questions or any areas where you need specific support, please put it in the Facebook group. Any yep. celebrations, any ahas, 
please put that in the group. We will modify what we're doing. What we said we're going to cover, we might cover. We might come up with something else better. Um, tomorrow, we're definitely going to walk through. Um, I have business models for newbies. Yeah, we're we're gonna. There, there's going to be a little bit more of a, um, a a study model of offer message, what to do. We'll definitely touch on the world's uh, simplest business plan, and I'm coming up with notes on topics that we're going to cover as we speak. We've got some more time. Thank you for showing up. Does Thanks anybody have everybody. any questions for us? Any particular questions now? Where are the links? Got it. <laughs> got it. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Perfect. Yeah. You got to shift the energy. That's you got to be and do. All right. Well done, Thanks, Jane. Leah. Thanks, Anita. Thanks, guys. Hey, Megan. Hey, Lou. Hey, Tamara. Tamara. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. We'll get this posted. I think it's going to be like already in the Facebook group as a Facebook Live. Come so, on. Technology. How great is that? <laughs> See you guys tomorrow. Take Bye. care. Bye.